Hi, this is uh, my second lecture on uh, polynomial regression models and uh, here is the content of this uh, module, uh, polynomial models in one variable and uh, we already talked about uh, orthogonal polynomials in the previous uh, lecture and uh, today we will be talking about uh, piecewise polynomial fitting and uh, we will also talk on polynomial models in two or, or more variables. Well, so uh, polynomials are uh, used in situation when the response variable is uh, nonlinear and uh, in the previous class you know we uh, learned how to uh, fit a um, kth degree polynomial and uh, and also we have learned how to fit a kth degree polynomial uh, using uh, orthogonal polynomials uh, technique so i'll just uh, recall uh, those things uh, quickly for the detail you know you have to uh, see my previous uh, lecture. So, so this, this is what the kth order polynomial in one regressor variable x. The model is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus beta k x to the power of k plus epsilon. And uh, we have realized that you know instead of fitting this model, uh, there are several advantages if we fit this model uh, where uh, p 1 is a uh, orthogonal polynomial of order 1 and similarly p k is a uh, orthogonal polynomial of order k. And uh, this can be uh, considered as a multiple linear regression model with uh, uh, k regressors. And here you can see the uh, x matrix, which is the coefficient matrix. And uh, so, once you have the coefficient matrix, you can compute x prime x and then you can estimate the uh, regression coefficients like you know alpha j hat and alpha 0 hat. And uh, then the residual sum of square is uh, summation E i square, which can be written as uh, in matrix form. This can be written as y minus y hat prime uh, into y minus y hat. And uh, finally, this is equal to uh, uh, SST, which is uh, uh, SS total minus alpha j hat sum over j equal to 1 to k into uh, summation y i p j x i i from 1 to n. Okay. So, this one is, uh, so s s residual equal to s s t mi minus something. So, this one is uh, s s regression and, uh, and uh, so, the regression sum of square is this quantity and uh, here the regression sum of square due to the jth term uh, or due to alpha j we say is the jth term in this uh, expression. So, also uh, I mentioned that you know, all uh, sum of square for alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k are orthogonal and uh, their value uh, they do not change depend on the order of the polynomial. So, if you if you instead of kth order if you make it say k plus 1 th order uh, polynomial now, uh, then the SS regression due to alpha j, j say less than or equal to k uh, does not change uh, even if you increase the order of the polynomial. And uh, finally, we had this uh, ANOVA table. So, this is the total uh, variation 
and uh, this part is basically uh, SS SS regression. So, SS regression is you know can be split it into SS regression due to alpha 1, due to alpha 2 and due to alpha k you can write down separately uh, to check the significant of uh, each coefficient and uh, here is the ANOVA table we talked about in the previous class. So, uh, what I want today is that you know I want to um, give an uh, example uh, to explain this uh, uh, orthogonal polynomial fitting. So, here is the uh, example. So, you have the x variable. Uh, so, this is the regressor uh, here and this is the response variable uh, income per share in, in dollar. So, different year you have different uh, income per share. Well, so the question is uh, find. Uh, so, if you if you plot uh, say if you prepare the scatter plot for this x and y, uh, here you, you must have observed that all the uh, x i's are equally spaced. Okay. So, instead of 1986, you can call it just 1 and then this one is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, if you draw a scatter plot, uh, you, uh, you, you, you will see that you know, uh, the scatter plot indicates that the response variable is nonlinear. So, you have to go for uh, polynomial fit. So, the question is fit a polynomial of suitable order that will provide a satisfactory approximation function for this data. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, total 8 observations. So, what we will do is that we will try to fit a polynomial of degree 6 first. Bec uh, why we are going for degree 6? Because I okay, will explain that later. If you go for polynomial of degree 7, then uh, there will be nothing le left for SS residual. I mean all the variability will be explained uh, by a 7 degree polynomial, because the number of observations is uh, 8. So, consider this polynomial. Uh, this is of order 6 because it involves uh, p 6 x which is which is of order 6. Well, now, uh, well to, to fit this uh, model, what we have to do is that we have to compute uh, p naught x, p 1 x, p 2 x like p 6 x here. Well, we know that uh, p naught x is is equal to 1 for all x. So, here uh, the x uh, is basically 1986 uh, starts from 1986, but I will just call them like. Uh, so, x is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that is all. Now, p naught x is equal to 1 for all x, for all x i you can put i equal to 1 to 8. Now, p 1 x which is uh, orthogonal polynomial of order 1, uh, if you can remember that p 1 x is equal to lambda 1 x i minus x bar by d. This is what the p 1 x is. And I explained this uh, thing uh, in the previous class also. So, here uh, x bar you can check that x bar is the average of these values, it is uh, 4.5. And then uh, if you compute for x 1 that is equal to 1. So, 1 minus 4.5 is minus 3.5 and here you can see the d is equal to uh, 
is equal to big 1, because the space between two value is 1. Uh, so, for x equal to for x 1, it is minus 3.5 and lambda is a value uh, is an integer chosen in such a way that uh, this polynomial value uh, become integer. Okay. So, here you have to choose lambda 1 is equal to 2, so that minus 3.5 is equal to minus 7. Similarly, for uh, x equal to 2, you will get minus 2.5 into 2 that is minus 5. Similarly, you will get all the values here and look at uh, p 2 x from my previous class and you can get this table. In fact, you know uh, in exam uh, generally uh, this table is provided. Okay. So, once you have this table, you can uh, estimate the coefficients alpha hat. right? So, these are the estimates of uh, alpha naught, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5 and alpha 6 hat. Okay. Now, uh, what we will do is that we will make uh, ANOVA table for the given data. We have to compute uh, uh, SS regression, SS regression for, for say uh, alpha 1. So, you know this is the SS regression formula. So, S s regression for alpha 1 is equal to alpha 1 hat summation y i p 1 x i, i equal to i is from 1 to 8. So, you know uh, everything here and then you can compute S s regression due to alpha 1 and all these things are tabulated here. So, the S s regression due to alpha 1 is uh, 0 0.771. And similarly, you can compute the SS regression for uh, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5 and alpha 6. And here is the total variation 0 0.821 and the residual is 0 0.003. So, uh, I wanted to say here is that, well, uh, let, let me uh, uh, before that let me uh, test the significance of uh, different coefficients. So, let me start with alpha 1 hat. So, what is the, whether alpha 1 hat is significant or not? So, the model is y equal to alpha naught hat. So, the fitted model is this alpha 1 hat p 1 x like alpha 6 hat p 6 x. So, this is the fitted model. Now, I am trying to is, uh, trying to test the uh, significance of alpha 1 hat, whether alpha 1 hat is significant. If it is significant, then that should be present in the model. If it is not significant, then this term should not be there in the model. So, how do I test the significance of alpha 1 hat? Uh, this is nothing but S S regression due to alpha 1 hat that is 0 0.771 by m s residual. So, s s residual is same as m s residual because the degree of freedom is. So, m s residual is also 0 0.003 because m s residual is equal to s s residual by the degree of freedom. So, this follows uh, f distribution. So, this value is 2 point sorry uh, 200 57 and this is the observed value uh, for alpha 1 and the tabulated value is uh, the value you will get from the f tab table and this follows uh, this has the degree of freedom 1 1. So, f 0 0.05 1 1 you can see from the table that it is 6 161.4 and so the observed value is greater than the tabulated value. So, alpha 1 is significant. So, alpha 1 p 1 x should be there in the model. Now, uh, you see the 
S S regression due to alpha 2 hat is significantly smaller than the S S regression due to alpha 1 hat. So, what is this S S regression uh, due to alpha 2 hat is, is the part of variability in y which is explained by the sec, uh, by alpha 2 hat or the second order term. So, this is the part this is the variability uh, out of this variability which is explained by the second order term that is alpha 2 hat p 2 x. Uh, and these are uh, quite smaller than the, than the SS regression due to alpha 1 hat. So, instead of checking all these, I will see which one is the bigger one. So, for alpha 4 hat, it is uh, uh, significant, I mean this is larger than the other um, alpha j's. So, I will test uh, the significance of alpha 4 hat first. So, that can be tested. Uh, so, what I am trying, what I am testing is that I am testing this hypothesis H naught that alpha 4 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that alpha 4 is not equal to 0. So, to test this hypothesis, I will use this uh, uh, F statistic. So, F is S S regression or M S regression basically this is uh, 0 0.028 by uh, M S residual which is 9.3 and uh, this F follows F has degree of freedom 1 1. Uh, so, the tabulated va uh, value from the table is uh, 161.4 and this one is uh, much smaller than the uh, tabulated value. So, alpha 4 is not significant. Since alpha 4 is not significant, you can easily test that, you can easily prove that the other alpha i's like alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5 and alpha 6, they are uh, not significant. Okay? Not significant means you you accept the null hypothesis that alpha four is equal to equal to zero. So you can put alpha four equal to zero in the model. Well, so uh, this uh, uh, all this test what uh, it uh, implies that instead of going for a six uh, polynomial of order six, you can f simply fit a straight line model like y hat is equal to alpha naught hat p 1 x sorry sorry uh, alpha naught hat uh, plus p 1 x alpha 2 hat. Okay. So, this is this is the model you can go for uh, yeah. So, this so the straight line model is this one. Uh, and uh, and here is the fitted model you can see and now uh, to check double check whether this fit is uh, good or not uh, you can uh, compute r square parameter coefficient of determination uh, so here uh, this one is nothing but <coughs> uh, ss regression uh, by uh, SS total. Okay. So, this is the SS regression and SS total. So, this R square parameter it uh, computes uh, the proportion of variability in the response variable uh, which is uh, explained by the model, the part of the variability uh, which is explained by the, um, by the model. And here you can see that R square is uh, 94 percent that means, uh, 94 percent of the total variability is explained by the model. So, which is uh, quite good. So, finally, you know what we did here in this particular example is that we, we started with a, a 6 degree or a polynomial of order 6 and we have fitted that model using orthogonal polynomials. And then we have tested the significance of the higher order coefficients like alpha 6, alpha 5, alpha 4, alpha 3 and alpha 2, none of them are significant. So, we can remove them from the model 
and we can only continue with alpha naught and alpha 1 because alpha 1 is significant. Okay? So, uh, so f f finally, the conclusion is that instead of going for a higher order model for this particular data, we can go for a simple state line fit. Okay? And uh, that is all for the uh, polynomial regression model. And now we will go for piecewise polynomial fitting. Okay, let, let me just you know explain what is this piecewise uh, polynomial. Uh, way, uh, why we need uh, piecewise uh, polynomial fitting. Uh, so, you are given a set of data uh, x i y i for i equal to 1 to n. You prepare the scatter plot, the scatter plot indicates that the response variable is uh, nonlinear. So, you go for a polynomial uh, fitting and uh, we always try to keep the order of the polynomial low. So, if you see that uh, low I mean uh, low degree polynomial uh, does not provide uh, good fit to the data, what we do what you will do is that you, in, you increase the order of the polynomial and see whether uh, the higher order polynomial uh, improved uh, the fitting or not. So, if you see that the lower degree polynomial does not provide uh, good fit to the data and increase in the order of the polynomial also does not uh, improve the situation uh, substantially, then this sort of things indicates that that the original response variable uh, that behaves differently in different seg segments of the range of x. Okay? So, maybe uh, up to certain range it the response variable is some degree polynomial and in the next segment uh, it behavior changes change maybe in the next next segment it is just a straight line and uh, in the next segment it might be quadratic something like that so in those situation we we need to go for a piece wise uh, polynomial fitting and uh, i'll be talking about uh, this thing uh, this uh, piece wise polynomial fitting now in detail uh, so as i told that so this problem this problem means you know uh, lower order polynomial provides poor fitting but you know increase the order of the polynomial does not improve the situation so this problem may occur when the function behave differently in in different parts of the range of x okay so uh, the spline now I'll introduce some uh, technical terms. Uh, this is also called the spline. Okay, so the splines are piecewise polynomial of order k. Okay. 
uh, and the joint points of the pieces are called uh, knots. Okay. So, uh, here specifically we will be talking about uh, uh, spi spline uh, or no, we will be talking about cubic spline. The cubic spline that is for you, you, you consider the degree of the polynomial k or the order of the polynomial k is equal to 3 is uh, is usually adequate for most practical problems. Okay, so, uh, here we will be talking about only uh, cubic spline. Uh, let me uh, give the model for cubic spline in detail. So, cubic spline, a cubic spline with with the uh, h knots and the knots are say t 1 which is less than equal to less than t 2 less than t h with uh, continuous first and uh, second derivative can be written as So, this is the response variable y, uh, which is a function of x. Uh, so, I am writing the cubic spline model for uh, involving k knots. Okay. So, this is the model beta naught j x to the power of j, j is from 0 to 3 because of the fact that it is it is of order 3 it's a cubic spline plus beta i x minus t i to the power of 3 plus i equal to 1 to h don't worry i'll explain uh, all this thing uh, right now and also using I uh, will illustrate this thing using an example also. So, what is this function uh, x minus t i plus this is the notation which stands for this function uh, is equal to x minus t i if x is greater than t i. That means, if x is x minus t i is greater than 0, then this one is x minus t i and 0 if x minus t i let me write in this way less than equal to 0. So, this is greater than 0, this is less than 0. Okay. So, let me uh, uh, explain this model and this might not be uh, 
you might not be so comfortable with this model at this moment maybe. Uh, let me explain this model uh, for uh, say two knots. Okay, so, this is my cubic spline mo uh, model and uh, now I will consider a more specific case say cubic spline uh, and here let h is equal to 0, 2. So, there are two knots that means three segments. So, we, we are considering a special case of two knots and the knots T 1 and T 2 are known. We are assuming that. So, my model is uh, y equal to beta naught naught beta naught 1 x plus beta naught 2 x square plus beta naught 3 x is cube plus beta 1 x minus t 1 to the power of 3 plus plus beta 2 x minus t 2 to the power of 3 plus plus epsilon. So, this is uh, the model uh, we have to fit and what does this mean? Now, if I uh, use uh, the meaning of this function like uh, then this is nothing but y equal to beta naught naught plus beta naught 1 x plus beta naught 2 x square plus beta naught 3 x is cube. So, y is this plus epsilon in the range. So, I am dividing the whole uh, range. Suppose, the range of x is from a to b, from a to b. This is a, b. This is the range of x and I have two knots, so t 1 and t 2. Now, you can check that this y is equal to this in the range a less than equal to x less than equal to t 1, because here in this range x is less than t 1. So, this is equal to 0 and this is also equal to 0, because t 1 is t 1 is smaller than t 2 and y is equal to beta naught naught plus beta naught 1 x plus beta naught 2 x square plus beta naught 3 x is cube plus beta 1 x minus t 1 to the power of 3. This is my y or this is my model in the range uh, x greater than t 1, but less than equal to t 2. I am sure you know if you just put the meaning of uh, uh, what uh, this function stands for, then you will get all these things. And then the last one is beta naught naught plus beta naught 1 x plus beta naught 2 x square plus beta naught 3 x is cube plus beta 1 x minus t 1 to the power of 3 plus beta 2 x minus t 2 to the power of 3 in the range x greater than t 2, but less than equal to b. Because in this range, uh, when x is greater than t 2, x minus t 2 plus is equal to x minus t 2. So, you can put that here and here also when x is greater than t 2, then it is also greater than t 1. So, uh, x minus t 1 plus is nothing but x minus t 1. So, it is a simple uh, verification. So, this is the model uh, you know uh, for 
uh, cubic spline involving only uh, two knots. And uh, here we wrote it uh, for uh, general case. Now, the problem is you know uh, deciding the number of uh, knots and the position of the knots. Okay. So, deciding on the number and uh, positions of the knots and the order of the polynomial in each segment is not a simple job. Okay. So, uh, according to uh, Old 1974, what he suggests is that uh, as few as uh, not possible. So, as few knots as possible with at least 4 or 5 data points per segment. Okay, so, we understood the uh, cubic spline, uh, which is a particular case uh, when the order of the polynomial uh, is 3 and also for uh, we explained this case for uh, we explained this cubic spline uh, involving two knots. Okay. Now, we should be able to, we should be given uh, a model like this uh, say with involving two knots, uh, we, should, we should be able to fit the regression coefficient, because, because this one is nothing but uh, a multiple linear regression model. Okay. And so, we should be able to estimate the regression coefficients. Uh, let me talk uh, about that little bit what is the x matrix and all these things. Okay. So, the model is y equal to beta naught naught plus beta naught 1 x plus beta naught 2 x square plus beta naught 3 x cube plus beta 1 x minus t 1 to the power of 3 plus plus beta 2 x minus t 2 to the power of 3 plus plus epsilon. So, this is the uh, cubic spline model uh, with uh, two knots that is h equal to 2. So, uh, I just uh, uh, want to mention you know, how to estimate the regression coefficients. So, first you try to compute uh, the coefficient matrix x which is nothing but 1, I mean uh, 1 and then you write down the column corresponds to the response uh, corresponds to the regressor x and then x square, x cube and then x minus t 1 to the power of 3 plus x minus t 2 to the power of 3 plus. So, here is the x matrix, if you do not understand again I know I am going to give an example to explain all these things, but uh, yeah. So, if you have this uh, coefficient matrix, uh, so this is the coefficient matrix and then you can write uh, this cubic spline model with uh, two knots in terms of matrix notation as y equal to x beta plus epsilon and then you know uh, what is uh, beta hat beta hat is equal to x prime x 
inverse x prime y and uh, and of course the beta here is beta not not beta not 1 beta not 2 beta not 3 beta 1 and beta 2 okay so there are six uh, regression coefficients to be estimated and uh, here is the ANOVA table uh, for this uh, source, degree of freedom, SS, MS and the F statistics. Uh, okay. The source is the variation uh, SS uh, regression. and then residual and here you have the uh, total okay and uh, if you have uh, n observations then the degree of freedom for uh, total variation is uh, ss total is n minus 1 and here you can see that uh, there are six parameters to be estimated. So, when you compute the degree of freedom for residual uh, this E i, there are n uh, residuals and uh, since you have 6 parameters there will be 6 restriction on E i. So, the degree of, degree of freedom residual degree of freedom is n minus 6 right n minus 6. So, the degradation degree of freedom is then 5. And so, this is SS regression, SS residual, SST and once you divide this by 5, you will get MS regression, MS residual all these things and here is the F statistics which is MS regression by MS residual. So, this is the global test you know whether the model is significant or not. And if you want to test a particular parameter whether say whether this is significant or not, then you have to find the SS regression due to this parameter or this, this term due to this term and, uh, and then you compute uh, SS regression due to beta naught 3 by MS residual. So, you know all these techniques. Uh, well, let me uh, explain this uh, cubic spline with uh, two knots using an uh, example. So, this is called uh, voltage drop data and uh, here is the uh, response variable and you have one regressor and there are total 41 observations. Okay. And uh, I should mention that the source is from introduction to linear regression analysis book. And so, you have uh, x i y i. So, you have x i you have observation x i and x i y i for i equal to 1 to uh, 41. So, the first step is that you 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 prepare the scatter plot and see the behavior of the uh, uh, regression uh, sorry behavior of the response variable. So, here is the uh, here is the scatter plot for this data and this scatter plot clearly indicate that uh, the response is uh, nonlinear. Okay. So, we cannot go for uh, simple linear regression model. Uh, well, so what you can do, you can start with uh, say if you want to start with a cubic polynomial first. So, you start with the cubic polynomial, you fit a cubic polynomial to this data, you know how to fit a uh, cubic polynomial, right? Uh, either you can use, uh, so you have to fit a model like, sorry, here it will be cube. So, you have to fit a model like y hat is equal to alpha naught plus 
alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x square plus alpha 3 x q plus epsilon. So, if you fit that model say using orthogonal polynomial, here is the fit and now to check whether this cubic polynomial fit to the data is, uh, is a good uh, or not. Uh, the standard technique is that you, you go for the residual plot, this is what the residual plot is. residual plot. So, you what you do is that you plot the residual E i against the estimated response. So, here is the residual plot and I will talk about this residual plot later on. This is for the cubic spline model. Uh, so, the residual plot is uh, not so good because you can see the uh, residuals are not uh, centered uh, about the line E equal to 0. So, that means, uh, this indicate that the cubic polynomial fit is not so uh, good uh, for the uh, for the given data and uh, next what we will try is that you now we will go for the cubic spline model uh, with uh, two uh, knots and uh, and two so the knots we will choose like you know the first knot is t1 is equal to uh, 6 here and the other knot uh, we are going to choose is that t equal to uh, 13 uh, that uh, if you want to say me you know why it's so i can explain this t2 because uh, from T 2 onwards like you know here and now you must have observed also that this all these x i's are equally uh, spaced and here the d the difference is 0.5. So, if you see uh, from here uh, from 13 onwards uh, the response uh, variable start decreasing and uh, from here I mean it is always increasing, but uh, if you look the if you have a look of the scatter plot might be that indicate. So, 6.5 is somewhere here. So, you want to have a have a uh, segment. So, this is one segment, this is one segment, this is my T 1 and then the 13 is uh, 11 to 13. So, this is 13. So, this is uh, T 2. So, I am taking this is uh, as my one segment and then T 1 to T 2 is my second segment and then T 2 to uh, up to 41 or whatever, up to 20 it is uh, the third segment. Uh, and using uh, T 1 is equal to 6 and T 2 equal to 13 we will fit a cubic spline model now. So, here is the <coughs> model now, this is the model we are going to fit. Uh, you can see that T 1 is equal to 6.5 sorry it is 6.5 and T 2 is uh, 13 and the what you have to here I, I will explain now how to get the uh, coefficient matrix, because once you have the coefficient matrix you can you can uh, you can do all the calculations, you can estimate the parameters and all these things. So, you see here for the first segment, uh, these are the uh, x i's value. So, first segment is from uh, 1 to 6. So, from this is my first segment. So, from 0 0 to uh, 6.5, uh, you have you just you know uh, you have the x values you squared them and here the cube and this function is 0 for the first segment and this function is also uh, this function x minus 13 to the power of 3 plus this one is also 0 for the first segment and for the second segment or in the second segment uh, we have these these are the x values 
So, you can square them and uh, uh, cube and in the second segment uh, this x minus 6.5 plus is equal to x minus 6.5. So, you can see accordingly I have uh, uh, tabulated the values here. So, x is equal to 7.0. So, 7.0 minus 6.5 to the power of 3 and in the second segment this quantity or this term is equal to 0 and here is my third segment. These are the x values square cube and in the third segment this one is x minus 6.5 plus is equal to x minus 6.5 and similarly in the third segment since uh, t is greater than 13 here starting from 13.5. Uh, so, x minus 13 plus is equal to x minus 13. So, you put the x values here uh, and uh, you get uh, the coefficient matrix. So, I wanted to explain this uh, coefficient matrix and I hope that it is now it is not so difficult to understand. And once you have the x matrix, you know. Uh, my we can write it in the matrix form that y equal to x beta plus epsilon and uh, you can compute or you can estimate the regression coefficients beta and x prime x inverse x prime y. This is how you get uh, all these uh, estimates. Now, the job is uh, I mean we have the fitted uh, model using the using cubic spline and uh, two knots one is 6.5 and the other one is 13. Now to check uh, whether this fit that's whether the cubic spline is better than the cubic polynomial fit we have to again go for the uh, residual plot. So, here is the residual plot for the simple cubic polynomials and uh, here is the residual plot. This is again you know E i uh, against uh, y i hat. This is y i hat. This is also y i hat estimated response. So, this is the residual plot for the cubic spline model and uh, here I, I believe that you know the, the residuals here are almost you know centered about the line e equal to this is the line e equal to 0. Uh, so, this residual plot is better than the residual plot for the cubic polynomial fit. So, so uh, this indicates that uh, that the data we have that uh, that behaves different different in different segments. So, so that is why a cubic spline model uh, provides better result than cubic uh, polynomial fit. So, uh, that is uh, all for today because today and uh, today we explained you know uh, we, we, we have illustrated uh, uh, polynomial regression uh, polynomial uh, sorry orthogonal polynomial using uh, an example and also we talked about uh, piecewise polynomial fitting. Uh, and also, you have given an example to illustrate uh, cubic spline model uh, involving two knots, and uh, that's all for uh, that's all for today. Thank you.